Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch. Welcome back to another exciting episode of The Others. I focus on some of the lesser known or underdevelopment game engines out there that you may not have been exposed to. And today we're looking at one that is very much under development called the Banshee engine. Now, if you're looking for an engine to use today, move on. This is not the engine for you. But if you're looking for an engine that has a great deal of potential, if you want to maybe start contributing to an open source project, the Banshee engine is maybe a diamond in the rough out there. It is a C++14 powered open source game engine, completely editor and framework it's actually got a staggeringly high amount of polish while at the same time being incredibly unready for production use so I'm gonna actually start by jumping into the engine first because I've experienced enough crashes it'd be nice to get the hands-on stuff out of the way before we get too far in so again this is not a production engine by any definition of the words so Banshee editor is available right here I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder so um, browse We'll go into um, C colon slash temp, uh, create a new folder called blah, blah, whatever. Oh, where did you go? All right. And then we will select that folder. Okay. Create a new engine. All right, so that process is also not great. And I actually warn you, if you do it in the wrong order, it just crashes straight out. So uh, there are some issues to deal with for sure. But as you can see, uh, pretty modern style engine. It's written in Qt, uh, so it scales fairly well on uh, high DPI displays. But here you can see, you know, you've got your primary worldview right here. You got your panning, you can zoom in and out. Uh, left mouse button to orbit, uh, left mouse button, or uh, alt plus middle mouse button to pan around. Uh, over here, you got your resources hierarchy or your scene graph is available over here, and you've got your inspector over there, as is the way of pretty much all game engines now. This one is component based. Um, but the process of working with things is actually pretty sweet. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll bring in a model. Um, so we're going to just basically compose a quick scene from scratch. So go into the downloads. Um, I'll bring in this. Actually, is that the one I want, or is it this one? I think this is the one I want. No, it's the other one. So go here, grab the uh, D and the normal, and just drag it in. So there it just imported the 3D model, and it was really that simple. So actually I can go ahead and instance a copy of it now into our scene, and you will now see that it showed up here in the hierarchy. Now you also notice that it didn't come in looking great, so press F uh, to focus on it, and it didn't work out too awesome for us, and that's because of the default scale that it comes in at. So I'm going to scale it up to 100 and do a re-import. There you go. So there is our Stormtrooper now imported into the world. Um, pretty easy so far. Uh, now we actually want to do is go ahead and assign a material to it so it doesn't look so crap. Uh, so we'll go ahead here, create, and we'll create a material. So new material was created. See, it takes the, so it's, uh, a modern style renderer, so Elbedo and uh, normal textures. So start off bringing in our normal. We'll bring in our diffuse texture right there. And done. That is pretty much all you need to do to create a texture. And then let's apply our texture to our Stormtrooper. So select your Stormtrooper here. You see down here it's got materials and there's an empty slot. To assign that material to this object, you literally just drag it over and drop it in. So now our Stormtrooper is in the scene. Now we're gonna go ahead and create another item in our scene. So we can do a new scene object and add components to it, or we can go up here to components and we can go ahead and create them directly. So I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, a point light. I thought, all right, components, point light, components, point light. All right, not sure why it's not doing it. Let's try a new scene object this way. light and what we will do instead is add oh that's my problem sorry I should have been doing it from scene object I think I was doing it from component so that was my scrope not the game engines so we'll add the point light to it so you see it's composition based so the component the your default entity up here just has positional information and then you add components to it as a container pretty standard in this day and age uh, we got manipulators for uh, moving the world or for manipulating items in the world let's bring this guy Actually, let's just quickly drop him to the origin. 
because for some reason it is very far off the z-axis. Let's also make this guy sure that he's somewhere around the origin. All right, there we go. And F to focus in, there we go. And now let's select our light again, move it away from the and over a bit. So as you can see, the rendering quality is pretty solid. Uh, we can come down here, we can duplicate the light. And let's duplicate it again. So we're just creating a simple three-point lighting. I'll put that one in behind him. All right. So there is our uh, Stormtrooper in the world. Now something else we probably want to do is actually have a camera. In fact, we need to have a camera. So if we go over to Game Preview, uh, there's no main camera, so it does not work. So once again, Scene Objects, and you can just create a camera like so. Uh, should be at zero, zero, zero. And we'll move this guy back slightly and up slightly and go over to our game. And there you see it immediately. So, you know, again, I can pop that guy up and over we see. Now, one of the cool things about this guy is all these tabs can actually be torn off. So if you're using a multi-window environment, we can create a separate window for our game. So if we wanted to keep it um, running or we can dock that guy back up anytime we want. So there you go, there is creating a game, creating a camera in the scene, configuring the scene. We haven't had any crashes so far, which I'm happy to see. Um, and you kind of get an idea of exactly how it works. We go into the camera, we'll see there's actually quite a few settings for the camera. So we can do uh, HDR on it, which I actually find it looks better without. But your call. Uh, we can come down here and we can do some uh, settings on it. I, I am not a camera guy, so I don't know what a lot of this is, but we can change the white balance temperature, exposure, like so get it looking a little bit more stormtrooper-y, gamma. So as you can see, the renderer is actually quite solid. The editor is quite solid. The technology here is quite solid. They just really gotta get, get that, well, the crashing out of the way. And next comes the coding. And the coding is actually going to be very, very cool uh, eventually. Um, so what you do essentially is just attach a script. So there's a custom shader language. You've also got um, material builder, uh, like what we used earlier. And we've got, who's this guy again? Uh, sprite textures. Okay, but what we want to do is create a new C-sharp script, and then just created our script right here, like so. And let's move it out of the game. So it's over here, you can see it, but what we're going to need to do basically is externally edit it. And what I really wish there is, at least eventually, and I haven't got it set up, and maybe it's just a mistake on my behalf, but we need to have a better integration code experience. Because right now there's no uh, project file being created for working in Visual Studio here, uh, so I don't get any code completion or anything like that. But as you can see, you got your standard um, component lifecycle. Um, so what you're doing is through various different callbacks or different points of time for this component, um, you respond to it. So this guy is the function that is called every frame, and we're just gonna go, this dot cnc so i've got no um, code completion which makes this challenging scene object dot move local and this takes a vector three and we'll move it along the x-axis every frame just like that so i just uh, created this code i don't run it from here oh, damn it all right, so there is our first crash. And I don't know why it crashed. It just kind of did. Um, maybe I can just ignore it and it'll go away. <sighs> Damn it. All right, so again, this is not a production-ready game engine. I think I've said that once or twice already. So hopefully my scene isn't too screwed up. Uh, so Banshee Editor. Uh, okay. Let's open that guy back up. All right, so my I didn't save my scene at all, so that's kind of toast. And I think what crashed is it did not like this line of code for some reason. I try to address that first. New vector three zero f zero f zero. Oh, maybe it's not float. 
Now, obviously it shouldn't crash when there's a code issue, but that seems to be what happened here. And there you saw it's now working. So there is uh, a full mono stack built in there. You don't need to do any of the compilation, etc. but uh, it's also, as you'll notice, a little bit crashy. Now, unfortunately it did not save my scene and I did not manually save my scene before that crash. So let me just drop a stormtrooper back in the world. And I guess I need to create a camera again. So scene object, camera. We're at zero, zero, zero. We're at zero, zero, zero ish. All right, let's go on back to my camera. Pull that guy back a little bit, make sure that we look right. All right, good enough. So obviously you saw the, the quality rendering before. Now we're just seeing uh, a silhouette, but I'm not gonna bother going too much farther on that. So I'm actually gonna save my scene this time. Like so. All right, so there is a not great looking scene going on, but we have our script that we created before. And again, all it had was that simple uh, move script like you can see over there. And now I'm just going to uh, select my Stormtrooper again, and we'll just drag and drop that script onto it as a component like that. And then if we hit play, boom, there you immediately see your script acting on a frame by frame basis. And that's kind of about it. Like the cool thing is, so we can add various different components to this guy. So let's go back here. Uh, we'll drag him up a bit in the world. I will go to components and we will add physics components to him. So, and we will make him a rigid body. So now we go ahead and press the game and now physics are kicking in as well. Also our script is kicking us off to the side. So we not only dropped, but we're also moving to the one side as we go. And, uh, yeah, that's about it for now. It's, it's got a great deal of potential. You saw it imported flawlessly. It works straightforward. The models to bring them in was just fine. The rendering quality is very good. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the code base, etc., in a moment. But as you also saw, uh, there are a lot of issues. Um, the code integration isn't as nice as it should be. And then let's get into the help. So when we get talking about the help files, there are, are, are basically none on one side of things and a pretty good set on another, which we will now look at. So first off, the homepage is uh, Banshee3D. Uh, I will link this down below, but it's www.banshee3d.com. And you can start getting into what some of the features are. Now the features go into a whole lot more depth on the GitHub page, so I will cover that in a second. But if you see over here, there is the docs link and the user manual is basically empty, uh, empty, but you get into the C++ reference and the C Sharp API, they're pretty solid. And also there's something about how the underlying engine works as well. So if you're working with C Sharp, as we were creating code earlier, um, there is a full set of um, documentation for uh, what we're dealing with, for both the editor API and the, um, the underlying engine API. So there is good reference material. And if you actually drill down a bit, it's pretty solidly, um, documented, uh, but literally it's just reference material right now. So there are no uh, basically getting started guides or anything along those lines. And I get why, basically there still needs to be a layer of polish before you wanna open this up to a, a larger audience. But at the same time, it's, it's so much potential in what I see here. And if we head on over to the GitHub page, which I will also link down below, you will see, once again, it's a modern C++ 14 engine. Uh, we already saw the C-sharp scripting. It is Mono 6, I believe, which is a reasonably, I think seven is the most current version. Um, People are going to love this aspect. I don't know why people love it so much, but it actually can use Vulkan on your side as one of the rendering technologies, as well as DirectX 11 and OpenGL. Um, you saw we could import a number of popular formats. We did um, OBJ there, but you'd also bring in FBX, PNG, PSD, TTF, OG, Vorbis, and WAV sound files. Uh, bringing in sound files is also super simple. I didn't actually do that. Do I have one in my downloads folder? Uh, let's go, downloads. Da -da 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 -da. Yep, here we go. So I'll bring in a wave file, drop it in there. So there is a wave file, create a new item in our scene, new scene object. Let's add a component to our scene object, audio source, grab our wave file, drop it on the clip, press play. Oh, I don't have my speaker turned on. I think that worked. Well, oh yeah, sorry, my bad. Uh, so just going back over to it. Oh, was I running when I did all that? Damn, I hate that. I hate that in Unity too. All right, so let's go ahead and create. Can I create it all at once? No. 
So I will create a new scene object. So this all looks very familiar. So uh, audio source, bring it over. And then what I forgot to do basically is, no, no, plan start is there. All right, go ahead and uh, save my scene. Let's press play. There you go. So there is audio working. It's that simple. If you want to do a positional audio, it's even easier. Let's go to our camera. We'll add a component to our camera and we will make that an audio listener. Like so that's really, I think, all you need to do. And then let's take our audio file and move it really far off to one side. Not, not that far. All right, a little bit less far. I don't know where I put it. Let's uh, not put it 3,000 off to the side. Let's do maybe 100. Oop, too far. 50. 40. All right, that'll work. So now when we play it, you'll get positional audio off to the one side. So, you know, the tech there is really impressive, but um, again, just needs a layer of polish. So you do have that positional audio stuff. I kind of missed that. Uh, the C-sharp API is built in there. Uh, so you don't have to go down to the C++ source code if you don't want to. Um, yeah, kind of, that's kind of the bit of it. You can get into the core features and there's a ton of more listed uh, plugin based, uh, P, uh, PBR rendering, area lighting, HDR rendering, all the camera stuff that we saw earlier, special effects, depth of field, uh, a shader programming language. Uh, I think they have their own uh, custom, yeah, custom high level shading language built over top of GL, HLSL and GLSL. Um, there's the, the extent of what the pipeline support is. There's a full GUI system with support for all these different controls. Animations built in there, physics is built in there. Oh, scripting is C sharp seven. Um, God, it's it's just really it's it's got an impressive feature set, and it just needs that layer of polish and the layer of documentation on top of it. But there is the core here for another classic open source game engine, and I've been watching this guy, um, you know, pretty pretty steadily since it was released. Uh, we're going back here. You will see. Uh, 12 days ago, 12 days ago, etc. So it, it is very much under active development. Uh, License-wise, it is under the um, uh, LGPL. Not my favorite. Um, so here's basically, there's a pay what you want commercial on top of it. So it's not um, GPL by any means, but um, LGPL does have a, enough traps attached to it. So it's not as friendly of a license as say, MIT or Apache or Zlib or whatever. Um, and so this is basically, it looks like angling when Banshee 1.0 is released, there is going to be a commercial license option. And you know what, I've got nothing against commercial software, but that might be why uh, there isn't a huge team rallied around this project because a lot of people don't uh, particularly like that particular license. So anyways, that is the uh, Banshee 3D game engine. Again, it's, it's more showing you about potential as opposed to a recommendation. I can't keep harping this enough, but you know, you, if you do try it out, you'll see exactly what I mean. There's just so much potential there. There's a great renderer, um, great backends, great support, nice C-sharp API, great functionality, and a whole lot of crashes and missing documentation. So if, if you're willing to put up with all those things, uh, do check out Banshee Engine. Otherwise, just keep your eye on it because this guy could be, you know, um, something really special in the future, but it does need a little bit of work to get there. So I hope you found that interesting. Once again, that is Banshee Engine available at da, 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 uh, Banshee3D.com. And hopefully you're still enjoying the other series. Uh, again, if you have any recommendations for something specific to be covered, do let me know down below. Banshee 3D, what'd you think of it? Also let me know down below. All right, that's it for now. I hope you all enjoyed it. See y'all later. Goodbye.